Welcome back. So far, we have seen the order of execution, taking into account synchronous code, the micro task queues, and the timer queue. In this video, let's add IOQ into the picture. A friendly reminder that you should have watched the previous three videos before proceeding. I would like to begin this video by mentioning to queue a callback function into the IOQ, there are a number of methods. Most of the async methods from the built in modules queue the callback function in the IOQ. For this video, I will be using the read file method from FS module. Let's head back to VS Code and run our next experiment. For experiment number six, I will be starting fresh. Let me copy paste the code to save us some time. All right, let's walk through the code. First, we are importing the FS module. Next, we invoke the read file method on the FS module. We are reading the current file contents, but that is not relevant as evident from the callback function. We are ignoring the arguments and simply logging this is read file one. After the call to read file, we are queuing up a callback in the next tick queue and a callback in the promise queue. Really simple as you can see. I want you to now pause the video and try figure out the output. All right, if I run node index, you can see next tick log statement first, followed by promise resolve, followed by read file. From this, we can infer Callbacks in the micro task queues are executed before callbacks in the IO queue. Let me now help you visualize the execution with the event loop. When the call stack executes all statements in our code snippet, we end up with one callback in the next tick queue, one in the promise queue, and one in the IO queue. Now there is no further code to execute, and control enters the event loop. Here, Next tick queue gets top priority followed by promise queue, which is then followed by IO queue. First, callback from the next tick queue is dequeued and executed, which logs a message to the console. Now that the next tick queue is empty, event loop proceeds to the promise queue. The callback is dequeued and executed on the call stack, logging a message to the console. At this point, the promise queue is empty and the event loop proceeds to the timer queue. Since there are no callbacks in the timer queue, the event loop proceeds to the IO queue. We have one callback, which is dequeued and executed, resulting in the final log message in the console. Hopefully, you're able to follow along. If this is clear, let's now jump to the next experiment. For experiment number seven, let me copy paste a slightly different code snippet. This time, we still have the same fs.read file and the log statement in the callback function, but instead of queuing up the micro task queues, we are queuing up the timer queue using a set timeout with zero second delay. I want you to now pause and figure out the output. All right, let's see if you got this right. I'm going to run node index. We see the output read file one followed by set timeout one. Now this may or may not be the output you expected. Why do I phrase it like that? Well, let me rerun node index a couple of times to show you a strange behavior. You can see in every run, the output doesn't seem to be consistent. We have read file one followed by set timeout one, but in the very next run, we have set timeout one followed by read file one. And this inconsistency seems to keep up. And let me tell you, this is bound to happen when you run the code several times in your computer as well. You simply cannot guarantee the callback function from set timeout with a delay of zero milliseconds will run before the callback pass to read file. And this will be our inference from the seventh experiment. 
When running, set timeout with a delay of 0 milliseconds. Along with an I.O. async method, the order of execution can never be guaranteed. Of course, this wouldn't be a code evolution video if I haven't guessed already that your next question is, why can the order of execution never be guaranteed? So let's understand that now. As it turns out, the anomaly is because of how a minimum delay is set for timers. In Google Chrome, if you can search Chromium DOM timer C++ file and click on the first link, it takes you to the C++ code for the DOM timer. Here, if you search for DOM timer colon colon DOM timer, we will come across a very interesting piece of code. Within the function body, we are calculating the interval in milliseconds. But the calculation seems to be a maximum of one millisecond or the user passed in interval multiplied by one millisecond. Which means if we pass in zero milliseconds, the interval is maximum of one comma zero, which is one. This will result in a one millisecond set timeout delay. It seems that Node.js follows a similar implementation. When you set zero milliseconds delay, it overrides to one milliseconds delay. But how does the one millisecond delay affect the order of the two log statements? Let's understand that. When you set zero milliseconds delay, at the start of the event loop, Node.js needs to figure out if the one millisecond timer has elapsed or not. If event loop enters the timer at 0.05 milliseconds, the one millisecond callback hasn't been queued and the control moves on to the IO queue executing the read file callback. In the next iteration of the event loop, the timer queue callback will be executed. On the other hand, if the CPU is busy and enters the timer queue at 1.01 milliseconds, timer would have elapsed and the callback function, which is queued in the timer queue, is executed first. The control will then proceed to IO queue and the read file callback will be executed. Because of this uncertainty in how busy the CPU can be and zero milliseconds delay being overwritten as one millisecond delay, we can never guarantee the order of execution between a zero millisecond timer and an IO callback. It is a slightly advanced topic to understand, but hopefully the explanation was clear enough. And that concludes our seventh experiment. All right, for the eighth experiment, which would be the final experiment in this video, let's understand the order of execution of callbacks in microtask queues, timer queue, and IO queue combined. Once again, I'm going to copy paste code to save us some time. Let me walk you through the code. First, we have the FS module import. We then invoke read file and pass in a callback function that logs a message to the console. Next, we have process.nextTick, which will add a callback function into the next tick queue. Similarly, we have promise.resolve, which will add a callback function to the promise queue. Finally, we have set timeout, which logs a message to the console as well. Now, as it stands, we still have run into the timer issue we saw in the last experiment. To make sure we avoid that, I'm going to add a for loop that does nothing. However, it will ensure that when control enters the timer queue, the set timeout timer has elapsed and the callback is ready to be executed. Pause for a minute and try figure out the output. All right, let me run node index. We see next tick callback first, followed by promise callback, followed by timer callback, and at the end, IO callback. From this, we can infer IO queue callbacks are executed after microtask queue callbacks and timer queue callbacks. Visualization is also pretty straightforward. When the call stack executes all statements, we end up with one callback in the next tick queue, 
one in the promise queue, one in the timer queue, and one in the IO queue. There is no further code to execute, and control enters the event loop. First, callback from the next queue is dequeued and executed, which logs a message to the console. Now that the next queue is empty, event loop proceeds to the promise queue. The callback is dequeued and executed on the call stack, logging a message to the console. At this point, the promise queue is empty and the event loop proceeds to the timer queue. The callback function is dequeued and executed. Finally, the event loop proceeds to the IO queue. We have one callback, which is dequeued and executed, resulting in the final log message in the console. Hopefully, this makes sense. Well, that is about the IO queue and its priority in the event loop. Thank you for watching. Please do leave a like if you're enjoying the videos as it helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you in the next one.